Okay. <laughs> All set. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the accessibility webinar series that we have. Uh, my name is Hadi Rangin. I'm a member of IT accessibility team, working with other colleague uh, uh, like Anna Marie, uh, Gaby, Dan, and Teriel. And then the, my primary responsibility in this office is mostly to uh, to make sure that software that we develop here on campus or we purchase are accessible. I have the really the pleasure to work with many uh, on-site I mean, local designer developer as well as uh, the, the designer developer from third party uh, or the software companies. So today I'm going to talk about you know, testing with screen reader, um, but like uh, as always, uh, I provide a kind of preview. So uh, first I would like that we just uh, really uh, elaborate a little bit about the difference between accessibility, uh, technical accessibility and functional accessibility. And we discussed you know, how we uh, what you can test, talk about the available screen reader for, for a program at least uh, in North America. And then we look into how a screen reader works and then uh, we get to the core of the, uh, per, uh, you know, the, uh, the presentation, which is that we can be really use a screen reader for testing. And of course, at the end or the end, I will have the demo, and then we go through the, some of the basic uh, screen reader functionality. Uh, and then uh, finally, we have some tools and resources to share with you. So uh, let me talk a little bit about the technical of the accessibility. In the technical accessibility, we ch check for the uh, coding practices. We really make sure, that we, we try to make sure that the, uh, the code behind the scene that we see, do they are according uh, to the standards or not. This will ensure that the assistive technology as well as the other uh, you know, sighted user or keyboard user can access those elements and interact with them. So as, as uh, it is clear, you know, we check really one item at the time. We said that, you know, for example, a button is a button, a menu is button, and the code behind the scene is according to the standard. What really in this method we do not understand or we do not know is that, uh, again, we are testing only one piece of the big puzzle. We do not. We do. Uh, we don't have any holistic view of the overall functionality of the, uh, the the application or the task that we have to perform. On the other side, we are uh, sometimes we we need to do the testing. Uh, we do the functional accessibility testing. In the functional accessibility testing, we identify the functional task associated with application. Just consider, I mean, we are going, if we want to go to um, test a, a G, a, a, an email program like Gmail. So Gmail is a huge application, just the Gmail side, but uh, we, we cannot test everything there. So we have to identify hey, what task we want to do that. One of the tasks, for example, is just composing a new email, another task, would be uh, uh, finding a specific email and reading it. Another task would be you know, adding a, you know, someone to a contact list. So if we consider, for example, composing a new email, that task itself can be divided in multiple steps. So the step one probably could be, uh, it, it can be, for example, uh, finding the compose button and then uh, clicking on it. Then going through the form, filling out the two field, CC field, BCC subject, and then you know, uh, entering the body of the email, composing some email, and then editing that, running the spell check, and then once, or, or add attachment as needed, or and once you're happy, and then you still you find the send button, and you send it, and then you wait for a confirmation 
to make sure the email has been uh, uh, indeed has been sent. So as you see, this simple task has been uh, needs to be done in a multiple steps. In the functional accessibility testing, we check for every step. So we practically check the task as a whole from A to Z to make sure that uh, every step is accessible. And if any of these steps is broken, then the entire task is broken. So uh, but for a real accessibility, uh, to make sure that really a task is accessible, uh, we need both. We need that every element that we land on uh, introduces itself as it's supposed to do, uh, as well as the entire task. So we, for, for uh, functional accessibility, uh, technical accessibility is required, but it's not sufficient. So we need to have both functional and technical accessibility in order to say that a specific task is accessible. So a lot of people, I mean, as, as some of you might know that I, I'm blind and it happens that I use a screen reader, but my background is computer science and, and, and uh, I used to look in the code or write the code and look into the code a lot. I'm not doing that anymore. Thanks to the students that I have, you know, they do the job for me. But for the screen reader, in all these years that I have been blind, when I run into somebody uh, who hears my screen reader is talking, they get the, the immediate feedback is that, ah, oh, that's you could you have, we can do all this stuff. Yes, indeed, in some way I can do it, but with some limitation. Uh, <laughs> I can only do that, or we as a screen reader can do that only when the elements or the, app, the interface or the applications that uh, we are dealing with are accessible. The fact that, that the screen reader just talks, it does is not enough. When you are on a real page, when you go, for example, to log into your bank, and then you, the, you, you have to be able to see the page, you have to see the login page, login link or button, and then login, and then you go through the application and you browse and then find the information that you want. So for a screen reader, this is nice like, like this. I mean, we see one piece of uh, information at the time. We do not have any information about the surrounding information or how these uh, elements are visually related. So the fact that uh, uh, we see only one piece of information at the time um, uh, is, is really great, but the application is only accessible when there is a structure be behind all those elements on the page. Otherwise, we really wouldn't be able to interact with the page at all, or uh, in at, at least not in an effective way. So, Again, what I wanted to highlight that, you know, that when you see here is a screen reader, it doesn't mean that things are accessible. Yes, we are in that direction that to, to have some accessible experience, but it is really not enough. Screen reader program, remember that they are made for screen reader users. Not, it is, they are not designed for accessibility testing. Sorry to disappoint you, but it is not designed for them. They offer hundreds of functions to a to help assist to help help user to uh, get the information that we are missing. As I as I mentioned that, uh, you know, when you are browsing a page or when you are in an application, you see only one element. You have no idea if there are some. Uh, something is changing in your interface. And, and, uh, and a, a good example is that, you know, when I, when I talk about this, you know, the hundreds of function is like this. I am in this page, that presentation that you can see that. I see all the, 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 the text that I am on, it said that hundreds of uh, functions, blah, blah, blah. 
I do not know, I cannot see the title of this heading, of, of this page. But the screen reader gives me a function to tell me and telling me, you know, what is the title of this page? And these are the really information that we need that. But otherwise, I wouldn't know this piece of text is part of, you know, a notepad, a part of the website, or part of the presentation that I am in. Or another example is that, you know, when you are, for example, working with Outlook and you are composing an email, you are in the body of the email. And then you are uh, heavily involved in the, the, in the, you know, editing your email, but you are about to send it. Instead of going and then checking the two field one by one, you can press a shortcut key, a screen reader shortcut screen program, a screen reader shortcut key. It reads to you all the people who have been added to the to field or CC field. So uh, without this extra information, it would be extremely difficult to interact with the, with, the, with the program. So what I am trying to say that these hundreds of functions are there that a typical user might not know or might not even utilize it. So uh, even though the people who use it, that, well, my headset at the battery low. <laughs> so I, I hope it lasts, but uh, don't worry. If not, then I have other backup. So in, um, in, in, in summary, uh, screen reader are a great tool, um, but note that it is not made for uh, testing and it is very complicated and then you should not use it unless really you know what you are doing. And then what I usually tell everyone, including my students who have been helping me, because some of them really, they, when we are testing something, they jump onto the screen reader testing because it's more fun for them, not for me, but for them it is. Uh, you know, we can only use the screen reader to verify the issues that we found, not to determine it. So again, use the screen reader to determine, uh, to verify the issues that you found, but never to, to, to uh, to determine the issue. The problem is that the screen reader are so different and they work so differently then it is very difficult uh, to rely on your observation because the screen reader might fail and the, but that failure, it, you do not know that because you cannot use the screen reader effectively or your uh, screen reader is not supporting that feature or your browser is not for supporting that feature or the developer has failed to implement that feature properly. So you see that this is a chain of uh, the, the, the several possibility that uh, you run into a failure, but uh, knowing that which one is the real cause of that, uh, it is not easy. Things that we have to consider, uh, we need to know that on the basic understand, we have the basic understanding of the of the coding practice. Uh, you cannot just uh, jump into a testing and, and then say that, oh, uh, you know, it should work this way because you do not know different widgets, different elements, how we should, they should uh, uh, behave. So you have, you need to have, you need to know that, for example, how the combo box should work. You need to know the specification for each widget or each element uh, to make sure that the observation is in line with the spec. And then, um, and, and then the, the occasionally we see that some, some people, they have their own preferences as a, a, the, you know, accessibility best practices. So please, please be careful. Whenever you are doing some testing, make sure that you leave your personal preferences behind and make sure that it is in line with the uh, spec. So there are a lot of accessibility tools that we use uh, for, to check for the technical accessibility. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, we will be offering uh, several sessions uh, during the Global Accessibility Day to introduce these tools. So you can uh, see you know, how we use these tools to determine some technical accessibility. 
technologies, uh, uh, when we get, I think uh, Terriol will send uh, the announcement when we get closer to Global Accessibility Day, which is later in May. And the, in, in, uh, these technical accessibility tools, as I said, are great tools, but they can at the most, I would say that you know, maybe they can catch 30% of the issues. So we need some manual check and we need to make sure that in the, indeed, the application are technical, uh, functionally accessible. And then uh, one the important thing, this slide that I would like to share with you is that you know occasionally we run into some uh, highly dedicated uh, accessibility or, or accessible accessibility uh, 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 inter, uh, you know individual that they really like to make their product accessible, but. Um, uh, since the technique that they use is not accessible, they try to come up with workaround solutions and they need to add bandages to their application to make it somewhat accessible. The you know, workaround solution, we do not consider accessibility solution. They are just bandage. And then, you know, please, please do not go that route. Once you go there, it feels as, as, as Dan usually says, it's a rabbit hole. So next time when you update something, you break your own workaround solution. So do not do it. So what do we test usually? So consider you give me an application for testing. So what do, how do we do user test? You know? Yes, I am a screen reader user, but it doesn't mean that I jump into testing with screen reader or, or tools. No, we check for consistency. So. I don't see that, but I have an army of students that they help me with, with, with uh, all these tasks that I cannot do that for by myself. For example, visual consistency, functional consistency. If you go from one page to another page, are we kind of visually in the same page or structurally it is the same? Uh, the typical example that the, the, the example that I usually use for this uh, slide or for to highlight my points is that. You see that in, for example, in the same domain, you see that they implement, uh, the, the developer the implement the question about the gender, male or female or whatever other option they give in some places at the radio group. And you see that, you know, in the next place, very, very, very close to that application, uh, they are using, for example, combo box. So note that, for a screen reader user or for every everyone, it, might, it takes some time to learn how the application is being used. And then when they get familiar to that uh, technique that you are using your application, they get used to it. So when you bounce back and forth between radio group and combo box, practically you confuse your user uh, uh, as they go through that uh, experience. So please, uh, uh, Make sure that functionally, you know, once you decide, you know, to use combo box, then use that across the application, for at least for the same function. Property of user elements. So, are you using, for example, button and then links interchangeably, or you pay attention? So, links should be used for, uh, you know, when you are navigating out of the domain or going to a different uh, page or. And, and button are designed to perform a function. So uh, we different, we look into that. And so far as you see that it has nothing to do with the screen reader program. Keyboard operability, that is the, one of the main focus that we put for the screen reader, uh, for, for, for uh, accessibility testing. So we want to make sure that we can uh, access every corner of the application and perform the, the, all the tasks, at least those tasks that have been assigned to us you know, to perform. Do we need to perform the, all the tasks? And then it isn't really so simple that everybody can do that. So everyone, that is something that really you do not need any special education about accessibility. You just need to press the tab key. <laughs> And then see that if you see the focus indicator, if you miss or did you fail to, uh, you cannot find the focus indicator, then I'm sorry, then the application designer need to look into that and then uh, make, the, make sure the, the focus indicator travels with the focus. We tap 
we, uh, we, we make sure the tab order are correct. So we, uh, you might be surprised if you haven't done that, you will see that you press tab key, but the tab key bounces back and forth and they don't go in the logical visual order that you are expecting. And then another point that we look into that, you know, some, some designer developer, they come with uh, proudly to introduce us, you know, the 65 shortcut keys that they have designed in their application. Yeah, this is a great to, to thing to have, but they have nothing to do with accessibility. As you see that here, I put not in, in, <laughs> in highlighted with the, with the star or the asterisk. So shortcut keys are good feature to have, but they are not accessibility features. So they, they are good as long as a handful and they are, are logical and consistent. But if you would do that 65 shortcut keys for me, maybe for to uh, or for keyboard user to access that, then I think you are asking for computer user. I mean, real. We, we are human, but uh, and, and we do not work like a computer. So another thing that we need to check into that ARIA landmark. ARIA landmark really very. Uh, simple, the most one of the one of the really simplest accessibility feature, uh, but, but they has have high impact in accessibility. Uh, what are they, uh, Aria? Uh, the you know, I try to explain them when I take you to a random page within the fraction of a second. You can identify how the page is construct constructed. You can see that, for example, on the top you have a banner. You have on the left side navigation. You might see the. There is a uh, maybe horizontal navigation bar, and you can see maybe the search area, you can see the footer, and then the area where the main content goes. These are as, as nicely it is uh, uh, pleasant is to see that, uh, and then within a fraction of a second, you can narrow down your focus and go to narrow your focus to that area that you came for, but screen, as I mentioned earlier, screen reader, they see only one element at the time. So they have no idea about this visual structure. So or we call, we call that application structure. So ARIA landmark is a means to provide this application structure. So there are containers on the page, for example, all the ban banner information, navigation information, all are there, and then you just uh, need to provide with semantical information and tell the, hey, this is my banner or this is my search area. And then, uh, then, then screen reader user, they can utilize it. So I, I can show it when we get to the demo side. So uh, we, we need to make sure that every, every content that we have in a page, it is in a, uh, it's maintained in a container and it is it has a proper label and then for the we use headings to structure content so let me repeat that we use aria landmark to structure the application framework and we use headings to structure the content that goes in it so uh, headings should be logical uh, hierarchical and then, then complete with the complete, it means that we should have sufficient uh, headings in the page. So when you see them as an outline, so it tells you enough, hey, these are the content in this page that you should expect. We see that occasionally some content or some pages that have uh, tons of information, but you know, they have one or two headings. And then, uh, then, then uh, we ask the designer or the developer or content creator, hey, how do you, are, do you expecting the screen reader user would be able to see the other information on the page that they have no uh, headings for? So with a completeness, we mean that the heading should, uh, you know, should we need to provide a good outline of the heading or heading should provide enough outline uh, outline to tell us about the content of the page. So um, grouping of elements. 
So you might be a good painter, you might be a good uh, artist to uh, provide a lot of uh, uh, stylistic effect to mimic a list. But as long as you don't use the structure, list the structure, doesn't matter how good you are in that painting, in the, <laughs> uh, we will not be able to see those uh, uh, items in a group as a list. So if you wanted the, the, that your list is presented to a screen reader as a list, then you need to follow the, you need to use the proper markup. So we have ordered list, uh, definition list, uh, a numbered list, and then all of them are well supported by a screen reader as well as a browser and a screen reader. So, and these are extremely important. Otherwise, these list items, they appear as an independent piece of text. So I go on the item one in your list, but I have no idea uh, is your list, uh, as, if, how, how many items are in your list, five items or 50 items? And there is no way for me to go to the end of the list for the case here if I'm not interested in it. So there are some features that, uh, with accessibility features that really we can utilize it uh, if you use proper markup. Then we can talk a little bit about the, we check about the um, uh, graphics. Uh, we differentiate between the stylistic graphic, graphic uh, and then informational graphic. For informational graphic, we, we do expect a meaningful uh, alt text. And all of them, again, they can be ca caught, most of them so far, I remember, I know that, uh, I think about it, can be caught by the screen, uh, by the accessibility testing tools. Then we get to the little more complex stuff. Actually, form is not complex. And we, when we get to the form elements, so we are expecting that the forms, they have proper and meaningful labels. So when user with screen reader tap to a form element, so they know that what type of the element it is and what is the value, if there is any, and then, you know, uh, then so they, they can interact with it. Uh, There are more complex uh, widgets, for example, dynamic uh, widgets that, uh, the, the, you know, it is really uh, can, can be, could be quite complex. And then we check also the error handling. If you make a mistake, uh, how the error uh, warning are presented to you and how you recover from the error. And then also with the expand collapse the widgets and, and many more complex things. But uh, let's go, let's continue. Uh, what screen there are available? So there are many screen reader uh, in the world, but uh, uh, in, the, in North America, for Windows, we have uh, uh, JAWS, NVDA, and Narrator for Windows. And then we have uh, uh, voiceover for Mac and iOS, and we have talkback for Android. There are different flavor of Android uh, I mean for, for, for talkback, depending on you have a Samsung, Samsung or other, other uh, variation of uh, Android. But uh, I think underlying uh, of uh, their uh, screen reader is talkback, at least for most of them in the Android world. Um, there is a entity uh, accessibility group, uh, we call that Web Aim. I'm pretty sure some of you have heard about them. They are great people, but we are greater. I mean, the accessibility team at UDA, I think they are number, number one. Uh, they have been tracking the usage of a screen reader in, uh, in the world, uh, I believe in the world, yeah. Uh, they started a few years back. But it is interesting that we see that JAWS as a commercial screen reader program has lost its ground you know, uh, year after year. Uh, I need to mention that the JAWS is the commercial one and then NVDA is a free one, but they accept donation. Um, JAWS uh, has a lot of algorithm in it to uh, compensate for the lack of accessibility. They do have a lot of, we call that guessing, guessing algorithm. For example, if you fail or, or as a developer fails to provide a, 
label for form control, then they check for the closest text to that form control. And they introduce the closest text that they found as, an, as, as a label for that form. Sometimes they are okay, they are right. Sometimes they do badly wrong. <laughs> so if you want to do any testing, please do not use JAWS, use NVDA and then use Firefox. So Google Chrome is too much, I would call the Google-ish, so too much Google fl flavor in it. And then uh, JAWS has also a lot of guessing algorithm that could confuse you. But if you stay within Firefox and, uh, uh, and NVDA, both try to follow the standard and they do not have uh, at least many guessing algorithm. So stay with Firefox and NVDA if NVDA is free, and then they come with some pretty good voice, uh, some voices. If your voices are not pleasant to you, spend you know sixty four dollar buy new voices, and then you can keep those voices forever. So it is very cheap. Um, here the statistic uh, I think as of twenty twenty one. I, I was really, I, I couldn't believe uh, that the JAWS has dropped to 16%. I mean, at some time it was the, the number one provider in, in this uh, business. But if you need uh, to study more uh, the, the, the trend, you know, we will be sharing the slides with you and then you can study by yourself. So a screen reader, how do they, how do they work? You know, a screen reader, when we go to a, page, let us, I mean, the way how it's are used in a web application or versus on a desktop application, they are different. But since our uh, focus is mostly is a web, I did try to explain a little bit about the, uh, how, how the, they work in the web environment. In the web environment, all this is clearly that they have two major modes, browse mode and then, uh, or reading mode, and then the, or interaction mode. What does it mean? You know, uh, as, as, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we see as a screen reader user, one element at a time. So we have no idea about our surrounding uh, information. Um, if we just rely on, uh, we, if, uh, you as a keyboard user, you see, you can press tab key to get all these elements that are we call that focusable that you know they're accepted uh, you know this uh, the, the, the key or the focus but there are a lot of non-focusable elements on the page there might be graphics that we there might be information on there might be a piece of text or we call it static text or some graphs that they are there and they are not focusable so for a screen in, in order uh, to make this information accessible to a screen reader, a screen reader program, they introduce a mode they call that reading mode or browse mode. In that browse mode, everything on the page, everything is linearized from left to right, top to bottom. So practically I see every, the first element, uh, then go next element, uh, regardless they are focusable or not focused. And then depending how the coding has been done or if the coding has been done properly or not, the reading order, the way that we read might be right or not. So uh, just consider uh, everything uh, is uh, uh, comprised into one pile of text. You read one piece after another, but behind this, reading or mess, if there is a structure behind those elements, then we will be able to utilize them. If you put, for example, the, uh, you create a list, list of five items, we will easily see that you have started the list with five elements. We can go in it and see that read the item one, write the item two and three. And if you are not interested to read that, we can press a shortcut key to bypass the entire list and go to the next element. 
So it is cumbersome, but if it is a structure behind your page, then we will be able to utilize. I hope it makes sense, but we will hopefully see that. So reading mode, that is the mode that we use to discover the page. When, you, when I am taking to a new page, I have no idea how the page is constructed. The first thing that I do is that to see that my, my headset is about to die, but uh, <laughs> if it happens, then I, I switch to another screen uh, as another speaker. Um, so when we uh, go to the discovery mode, uh, then we use those screen reader features to examine the structure of the application once we learn it, how the page is constructed, how the, then we navigate to the right section that we want, right region that we want, and from there we can read. And if you read the list or headings or graphics or forms, then, then we can you know, uh, interact with them accordingly. So on the other side, uh, there is also interactive mode, meaning that, uh, Consider, you know, I, I learned about this enough about this page. How do I interact with it? So there is a form, form element. So if I need to interact with the page, if I have to, for example, click on, uh, 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 you know, a, a combo box or radio group, then I have to switch to the uh, interactive mode uh, in, uh, in my screen reader and interact with it. If it is a text box, you know, then I have to switch to interactive mode and then the, whatever I am typing will go into that edit box. Otherwise, if, it, if I'm in a reading mode, everything that I type is intercepted the screen reader as a command. For example, I mean, I, I will talk about that uh, in, in a few slides. But, but for example, I can navigate to the next heading while I am in a reading mode. And then, uh, or look for the next uh, form control, next for the button, next for the, for example, next graphic or table. So I can do all this stuff, all this navigation when I am in a re reading mode slash discovery mode. So <laughs> now the answer <laughs> to this question. Yes, or as we say in German, yein. <laughs> uh, but do not use it for kinder or key, but keyboard operability. You do that for really selected testing and you should be really sufficient in using the screen reader to do that. Otherwise, the false positive will be high. And then if you somebody tells you a screen reader, the, you know, accessibility, of, uh, uh, JAWS accessibility, you know, we don't have such terms, you know, just uh, if somebody says that, you know, that it means they haven't uh, completely figured out what accessibility is. When we say that accessibility, then, then something is accessible. It means it is accessible for the mouse user, for keyboard user, for people with low vision who needs to uh, enlarge uh, the, the account or change the contrast, as well as for the screen reader. We cannot provide, we cannot afford to have separate interfaces for each group. So we have to have one interface and it should be flexible enough to adapt to my need. So as mentioned earlier, you know, we need to use the uh, browser tools or uh, accessibility tools for, for technical accessibility. That way we catch 30%, uh, or almost 30% of the uh, problems. And then you need to supplementally, you know, you can uh, uh, check or use the screen reader for, uh, uh, again, for some, some issues that probably are easier to catch, for example, the, the announcement uh, or live region or dynamic uh, uh, events that are happening, if they are announced properly or not, and so, and so on. Okay. It's, uh, I, I would like to, I'm rushing a little bit, 344, I would like to give you to, to demo uh, version of the demo site. So I have a list of the phrase currently used commands here. 
and then uh, we will be sharing this with you. So feel free you know, then utilize it as they need it. Uh, but every screen reader has its uh, own long list of, uh, the, the, you know, the, the shortcut keys and commands. Uh, there's, I think I included just uh, the basic how to go to the headings, how to list the area regions, uh, how to do that, uh, you know, graphics, tables, and then most importantly, how to start, how to stop them. Uh, one thing that you want to know that is the, the control key is the shut up key. So I have three pages of these uh, commands. So uh, I have uh, uh, so, so three pages that I had in mind, but I, uh, I cannot cover that, but uh, uh, we decided to, to just focus on a, uh, accessible university, which is a fake page and third time tutorial who has created this uh, some time ago. And it is really a good page to demo uh, accessible and inaccessible features. So I'm going to uh, exit and I keep it. I'm, I'm here, I preloaded the page, and then I am going to, uh, I guess, uh, I need to stop the sharing and then redo it so you can hear my screen reader. I will be back. I am, uh, once I start sharing, uh, the screen reader will be loud, but, uh, but uh, immediately I will change it, please. Uh, uh, so that might not be bad, it wakes you up. So let me, okay, now I can get rid of this headset. Can you confirm that the, the uh, no, voice is select the voice profile dialog default call blank escape select the voice profile dialog default call and combo box eloquence salt plus demo eloquence enter meet and controls okay is the volume is reasonable Ariel Thompson is requesting remote control of you can approve button enter meet and control accessible university demo site I think it's uh, it could be just a Ariel little bit louder Ariel Thompson perhaps. control your screen Ariel Thompson is controlling your screen louder JAWS context menu, utility sub menu. So, option sub menu, enter basic dot dot dot. Voice sub menu. Enter voice adjustment dot dot dot. Enter leaving menus, voice adjustment dialog, profile name, colon combo box, eloquence, 306, alt plus key, delete profile button, alt, profile name, demo eloquence, delete the name, synthesizer language, combo box, map, speak, sample, adjust, combo, rate, 74, left punctuation, comp, volume, 76, left, right, 79%, 80, 80, 80, 83, 84%, 85%. Is it good enough? That's probably, I think that's probably good. Spell rate chain, uppercase, okay button, enter. Okay. Make default voice profile. Yes button. No button, enter. Okay. Escape. So let me switch back. Select the voice profile, Microsoft, no eloquence, four of seven, demo eloquence, three of enter. Task switching, task switching, accessible university demos. Oh, it is significantly slower than the normal that I... Robot with a friendly face, assemble, <laughs> accessible <laughs> university. Okay, this is the page. Now it is the time that I'm going to demo. I'm using for the reference, I'm using Google Chrome. Even I told you Firefox, but my default browser is there and then I don't want to uh, really load that the Firefox at this time. Those features that I want to do that, uh, it, uh, they work beautifully I mean, easily here. So as, as I mentioned, this is the, uh, the if, for those of you who are familiar with this uh, project, um, um, Trail has created a fully accessible version uh, uh, of, of this uh, page uh, and alongside with the fully inaccessible, or not fully, I mean, it's a very inaccessible version of that. They look very uh, the same. But you see behind this page, a lot of a structure and you do not see it almost any structure for the other version, though they look visually the same or very similar. Um, when we get to this page, for any page, the first thing that we do is that, you know, as, as I mentioned, like you come to a new page, you want to see the structure of the page. You want to see that what is the major component of the page, how the page is constructed or what are the 
you know, uh, how is the application framework? So uh, what I do is that um, you don't need to worry about these commands. Uh, but you can study them by yourself, or you can see some of the summary of the, uh, uh, the commands that I will be sharing through the slides. So I am going to ask the screen reader, tell me the list of the regions. What are the major regions in this page? Document regions dialog, regions preview, banner one of five. So it tells me this is a banner region. Zero, main menu navigation. This is the main menu region. Main. This is main, which is usually main content area. Apply now, form. And this is a form called apply now. Content information. And content information, which is the very bad word for footer. <laughs> it, it means that. So, but that those, those people who wrote this wrote the standard, they like the content info. But then, uh, anyway, so uh, we are getting used. We got used to, <laughs> but it is not really uh, the, the human understandable, I guess. So consider I am interested to come uh, to uh, to go to the main content area. Apply now, main. So. I select the main content, I press enter, enter, and my focus is right at the beginning of that main content area. I do not know exactly if what the color behind that main content is, but probably Terriel can tell you where I am, but I am right at the beginning of the main content area. Heading level two featured story slideshow. And the first thing that I see that is a feature story slideshow. Do you guys know where I guess you, you see where I am? And then here I consider the main region as a content, main content area. So I am this region. And then I would like to say, I would see, I get an outline of the content here. Excuse, so, me, you know, excuse me for a moment. You've, there's a select all, you've done a select all on the page. So it's kind of hard to see some of the. Okay. Okay, Ethereal, can you click on somewhere on there? No. I just clicked and I'm curious now whether that messed your focus up. It looks like it probably did not, but can you no. confirm that you're still in the same place? Yes, I'm still same place. Also, just FYI that um, Hadi and I were playing with that earlier and it seems to be unique to, I think it's NVDA and Chrome, is that correct? Every time you hit the control key, it automatically selects everything. And so that yeah. is just kind of a, an anomaly, maybe a bug. It is JAWS and, and Chrome. Oh, JAWS. Yeah. Uh, but it happens that I use them and I didn't really think about that effect until a few seconds and I didn't want to change the uh, game uh, in the last second. So, but in the meantime, if it gets highlighted, Terriel will click on some spot to de uh, uh, de what's it called? unhighlight that. So deselect that. But thank you, Dan, for so, mentioning that. So here I'm going to uh ask a screen reader to tell me the list of the headings using this page heading list dialog heading list view accessible university one one of eight so accessible university and and watch for the heading level the number that you see on the right side is the, the heading level so the first one is heading one featured story slideshow two and heading two welcome to bienvenido two can you spot the barriers too? And this AU enrollment trends too. I forgot that you can hear that. So I don't I sometimes I better not talk. Apply now too. Security question three. So until here, Apply now too. I understand everything is a major section of the heading one. But when I see the next item, security question three. Security question three, I conclude this is part of this. Apply now too this guy, so they apply now. So that is how headings structure, they provide a good outline uh, about the content. So I can see, I can see the outline and I can see the, really, really, the relationship between this section or these headings. And then uh, focusing on the desired section, is extremely uh, easy. If somebody asks me what is the major problem on the web, I would say navigation, navigation, and navigation. Finding out in a jungle of the information that some pages and I'll offer to you, throw at you, 
it is so difficult, so difficult. You have no idea, you know, are you in the main content area or is somewhere randomly and then the, you see no heading and you have to browse the page from top to bottom to, to just figure out. And then the, the, the most uh, 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 difficult thing is that you scan the page from top to bottom and then you see that you, that you don't find the information that you came for. So Escape. these are the way, and then there, as I said, I am now in an interact in a reading mode. If I want to show you how the page is, is constructed, uh, how the page is presented to me, 36, 30. I can copy Not necessarily that and then box. put it in notepad and paste Enter. it here. Accessible university demo site accessible version. Accessible University Main Menu Navigation Region. So you will be surprised how how messy it looks like. But bes besides this messiness, visual messiness that you see, there are the necessary structures behind it. Show menu keyboard shortcuts about academics. Admit visitors. Uh, main, main what you don't see here is the type of the element because I just copied the text, not the structure. Featured story slideshow. Now showing slide one of but three. Robot with a friendly let me face. Find a list. Find. List enter. Escape. And next slide list of three items. So when you see Home. this enter. list, hopefully you can see that. Hopefully it is font is big enough. Before I enter the list, it tells me a list of three elements. Slide one current slide. Then it's like a list of one. Slide two. Item one item slide three. Two, list end. And list end. And consider that in a discovery mode or reading mode, I am reading this page. Slide, slide, I, slide get, one list of, I get to this 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 list. Land, list of slide one. Curve. If I am not interested for this list to read about this at all, I can press a command. It jumps through this list and takes me slide, slide, list, welcome, accessible in the welcome home. to welcome. Uh, again, there is a lot of benefit of providing this, this, this structure uh, in your page because it not only helps us to understand the application uh, framework or the content uh, uh, structure, it helps us with the navigation and then uh, being effective. Accessible university there are a lot of other interesting stuff uh, here is, for example, accessibility feature not necessarily. Uh, is the form control. Wrapping the top, show menu, keyboard shortcuts, about menu, sub menu, collapse menu, academics. Before you, before you get to that, Hadi, uh, okay. it is, we are pretty close to the top of the hour. And I wonder if you want to uh, pause and just see if there are any questions before, in case there are people that need to leave at the top of the hour. But then we could continue your tour for the benefit of the recording. And then folks can come back okay. to that and watch the recording. I, I thought I'm entertaining enough to keep people for two, three hours here. <laughs> We did have one person who had to leave, and they they said uh, this is Nikki says that um, uh, to to say thank you to you that uh, she learned a lot. So, but I wonder if anybody else has uh, questions that they want to share before the top of the hour. But do feel free to stick around if you if you have the time. But any questions, feel free to either type them in chat or just raise your hand, and we can call on you and um, and you can speak. Do we have any question, Dan? Nope. Yeah, good. So, but please, in the meantime, enter your questions or uh, I do not know, are we allowing uh, people can uh, turn on their microphone to ask, but uh, prepare yourself for the question if you have any. Uh, remember that for any uh, application that you have, we can meet with you and then go through the uh, testing together. And so we can learn about the application that you are working on and then you can learn about accessibility. That, that is how we build this uh, the, the accessibility or, or knowledge uh, in the campus or, or in our community. But uh, Visitors, in menu, the meantime, menu, collapse, menu. if I want to go, for example, to previous slide button, next slide one, slide two button, slide three button, submit button. Required invalid entry. Yes, Sunday bird Friday request submit button. Required invalid entry. Edit. Enter. Apply now. Form region. Sunday, bird, Friday. Which of the here? Sunday, bird, Friday. Which of these is not a day? Edit required invalid entry. Type in text. When it, when I 
you know, at this time, I, uh, I'm in that form controller, that edit box. I have, I see only the edit box. I do not know, I don't see the, uh, uh, the label associated with that, but the screen reader, uh, it can determine the label from the coding that uh, behind behind the, that edit box. So when I ask a screen reader, what is the label? Sunday, bird, Friday, which of these is not a day? Edit required in valid entry. So it says that which of these is not the day. So it reads to me the, the proper uh, the information or label for that. Virtual I am easy. looking for that the Spanish text. Uh, Wrapping the top, accessible in the featured welcome, heading level two, bienvenido. The adding of the section of the page suggests okay. heading level two, bienvenido. A problem, common problem that we see the screen reader is that you know when the, for the for the multilingual pages or content, um, if you do not do that proper coding, your screen reader will continue to read uh, the foreign text with English accent. So, but in this case, you know the the proper Spanish coding uh, or label or lang attributes is associated with that. So when I of the get section of the page to suggests heading level two, bienvenido. Bienvenido. Accessible universidad. Ua, es una universidad ficticia y esta es su página de ficción. Esta página está diseñada para demostrar una variedad de común. So my, my Spanish is not good, but, um, but I'm pretty sure some of you, <laughs> if you understood. The, the, the quality of voice is not greatest, but there are a lot of voices that you can use that I, I'm, I have not used for this profile. Um, 401 p.m. It is 401. So uh, officially, we are at the end of the presentation. But as I said, I can entertain you for another two, three hours if you are interested. <laughs> but uh, any questions, uh, any feedback, uh, any uh, did I cause more confusion than help? Which is usually the case. This is William Washington. Um, I thank you. Uh, there was a lot here that was a, a review for me in particular, but it, it's been a long time since um, I've, I've had this type of review. So it seemed thorough and, and helpful. So thank My you, Hadi. And, and with that, I'm going to, I'll jump off. So thank you. Thank you very much, William, for joining us. Quite a few other people, Hadi said, uh, thank you in the in the chat. Great information. Thank you uh, to all who participated. But uh, we stick around. So, uh, maybe uh, they only want to stop recording, but uh, I, I don't know if you think what uh, uh, is needed. But we it's, uh, it's up to you if you wanted to go ahead and, and demo whatever you wanted to demo. Um, you know, we could continue recording, not for two or three hours, but. <laughs> so eventually I'll yeah I'd like to uh, go have some dinner but <laughs> but I'm yeah happy to stick around and, and continue recording as long as you want to and then people can go you know, check out the recording okay so the uh, there hey, are other things that I can do that with the, the, the menu accessible universe. I can navigate to the uh, you know pro, uh, tell screen reader to go to the next uh, regions. Heading level one graphic accessible university. Main menu navigation region. I am on the main navigation region. So show menu keyboard shortcuts button collapsed. About menu sub menu for collapsed. Example, menu. I'm on about menu. I press enter. Enter menu news. One of now four. I am in an interactive mode. So on the air, until now, I was in a kind of discovery mode. But now I'm in the interactive mode. Governance two of diversity. I'm pressing arrow down key. Contact us. Four, and then four. I press right arrow key down. Academics. So it goes four. to the next menu. And then when I press tab key, admissions three or four. Goes to the next menu. Visitors four or four. Leaving menus, main region, students engineering award link. So it went to the next focusable element. Virtual PC. I, again, it, it moved. It, it is very difficult to navigate in a page that you are not familiar with in interactive mode. Because once you jump from one focusable element to next, you do not know what other, not, if, uh, if you are missing any critical information that is in between. So I 
not only me, most of the screen reader users, they try to stay in a discovery mode or reading mode as much as possible to make sure that they are not missing any substantial information. So I jumped out of the menu, but immediately I switched to the reading mode to make sure that I can, uh, to, uh, so I do not miss any information. So from here on, I continue reading. Previous slide button. So I'm on the slide. Next slide Next button. Next slide. And then. Uh, List of three items. Slide one, current slide button. Slide two button. So here, slide for example, the screen reader tells me the current slide is selected. Slide if two I do button. this, click on the second slide. Enter list with three items. Slide two, current slide button. Now showing slide two of three. You see that in a second. Now showing the slide two of three. These are critical information. Um, if you do not announce uh, that you know the dynamic event there, it will be very difficult. And there is, especially when it's a slide, it's very difficult for me to know that if it, it, it has changed. But now it tells me. The slide two is a current slide, and earlier it said that is being shown. Slide three button, list end, heading level two. And then uh, another thing that I can show it to you is the 13 columns and five rows, table. AU and row. So when we get to the tables, um, the column header and row header are in really uh, important, very important, because once you get to the table, when you get to the data cell, you need to know that the data that you are reading are associated with which column header or row header. So a screen reader will announce the column header and or row header if the designer or the developer has implemented those accessibility features. Uh, I am in the table and then with the uh, screen reader commands, that I can navigate in this page and uh, this table. Blank, row two. It tells me that I'm row two. I go right. 2708 CS column two. It tells me this is column two. And then this is what it tells tell me about the CS. And then uh, this is uh, I wrote the, the read the number. I don't remember don't remember what number it's read. 2708 N column oh, 3. Oh, two, 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 column so three. it was 2007. This was in engineering. 2708 eco column four eco i think for economic two, 2708 for 2007 so you can easily connect these pieces together you can connect the uh, data set with the corresponding column and row header um i ch can check also for the uh, for graphics used here. Select a graphic dialog. List one, list view. A large bronze tactile map with a speaker for audio output. Creative Commons license. So these are the graphics used on this page, at least informational graphic. And then these are the labels that we see there. A large bronze tactile map with a speaker for audio output. And writing a alt text is really an art. Uh, don't take it, uh, you know, to creative. Uh, this case, you know, as a, as a, as a it, take it seriously. We always recommend the all text for a graphic should be should be written by the author of the content. If it's an instructor, is a professor is a journalist or whatever, whoever is writing that, he or she knows best why he or she used that graphics for and what information uh, wants to be conveyed uh, and needs to be conveyed. So um, if you are a content creator, uh, then, then think about the alt text. It should give the message of the uh, graphic. And then um, if you are just a web developer, and then if somebody stands you with a graphic, ask them or have them write the alt text for you. And you can, can help them to how to create that. But really it is important because otherwise you will end up with the alt text that are just useless and then there's just noise in our way. For example, if we get picture, I mean, just it's a picture, picture of uh, you know building. 
no, but uh, is, is, it, is it meaningful there? So if you think even some pictures, they have no purpose, uh, no, no uh, message to convey, set the alt text for them to null. So by doing that, the screen reader just ignore them. So they, we do, they do not even render. OK, so that is so far. I wanted to I get talk with you. I can again talk about a lot of other features, like you know, switch to other screen reader and then go for more dynamic stuff. But I think for the uh, basic accessibility or screen reader testing, it is enough. So I am I would like to ask again if you have any question, so we can uh, elaborate a little bit on it. Any questions? We're still down to four. We're down to fourteen people. So if you want to uh, just unmute and speak, then that would be fine. Pretty small group. Okay, unmute. That is good. Yeah. I need to first disable the sharing. Alt Control Shift S. Your screen share has been stopped. And Alt Control Shift S. Basic tab check. Select screen. Share your entire screen. Share some checkbox check. Base. Select share screen button. Enter. Okay, I think now you are you can <laughs> you can relax. You don't hear the screen reader anymore <laughs> unless through microphone. So the, again, this is the way how we test. You know, before we really dive into a screen reader testing, we do a lot of uh, uh, checking about the consistency, uh, about keyboard uh, usage. Um, and then um, making sure that uh, all those things uh, have been considered and then uh, done. Really, we do that uh, screen reader testing after keyboard testing. Um, we we uh, would love to see um, that we do not really do the, the testing at the end of the develop development cycle. We would love to be engaged at the uh, to be engaged right at the beginning when you are designing, developing your site, your application. There are some really important decisions that we have to make. Um, sometimes the technique, sometimes the interaction mode that we are using uh, are not accessible, and then it will take you in a lot of trouble later for fixing that. Um, um, we usually tell designers that they are responsible, uh, the, the, you know, as developer for accessibility. They cannot just throw some interaction design or model and then throw it at the designer or the developer and then tell them implement that. Um, not every design can be effectively made accessible. So there are some compromises. They have, we have to make some compromise. Um, you know, we all have been talking about uh, universal design and, and so on, but universal design doesn't mean that everything can be effectively as accessible uh, as is for one group can be uh, can be made for the other group. So because I said we have to sometimes make good and difficult decision, and then make it equally uh, accessible. Uh, we see occasionally sometimes that mouse user, you know, it, it is it's clear. You know, just consider for example Microsoft Office product. You know, the invention that they had with the ribbon. This is a public information. They know that. This is piece of you know one of the worst things that they have ever done that as far as accessibility. You know, you, it is accessible. I mean, it was not, but thanks to the many, many years of collaboration that we have with them. So ribbon are mostly accessible. But I would say at the most, they are technically accessible, not functional. If I for every single command. If I have to know that press Alt H followed by R, then G, then for another command, I mean, this is not an accessible mod. Or I have to, if I could just 
for a function like you know resend an email i have to go through at least 26 tab key to get to reach that unless i know the these weird shortcut keys you know the successive shortcut keys you know sometimes three times three uh, keys or combination to get you there. This is not an accessibility model. So um, for many designs, for the application that we have, uh, we determined that you know if we were involved, if accessibility was taught earlier in the design stage, they could save a lot of extra work that, uh, that has been done later to make it accessible. So the sooner you engage uh, you know, you consider accessibility the easier and then I would say cheaper for uh, for you guys to do it. So we do that accessibility testing and we would love to do that, but uh, at the same time, we would like to be involved as early as possible. And then uh, we, we, we have been collaborating with a lot of on-campus team uh, unfortunately, I haven't looked into them. I haven't looked into the name of the people who are in the call yet. But uh, if you are not familiar with our office, the work that we do, we would love to meet with you. We would love to work with you on the projects that you have. Um, at the time, you know, accessibility is not required a skill for many people or many developers who are hired on campus. Uh, it is desired feature, uh, but uh, many the designer developers showed interest in the past years. So we worked with them through these collab uh, collaborations, as, as mentioned earlier. We learn about their projects, how it should work, and then they learn about accessibility. So if you are one of them, who are not comfortable with accessibility, we would love to meet with you, sit with you, and then uh, then, then go through your application and then exchange our uh, accessibility feedback with you. And then hopefully uh, together we can build a more accessible university. <laughs> That's tutorial. I just wanna, while you're sharing your screen there, as a bonus for the 12 people who are still left, <laughs> um, the, uh, the just kind of reinforcing the point about um, you know the, sort of the limitations of testing with a screen reader unless you really are proficient as a screen reader user, but uh, the table that you were reading has column headings like CS and ENG and ECO and Phi and Sci and Spa, and those. Um, you know, really could benefit from an expanded abbreviation and in fact they are coded. For those of you that are HTML people, um, they are coded with an abbreviation tag, an ABBR tag, with title that actually spells out the um, you know, what that what that abbreviation means. So, for example, for eco, that could be ecology or it could be economics, but it actually says in the abbreviation it's got abbreviation with the title of economics, and so that. As you were navigating that, it didn't didn't actually read that, and so somebody might think, well, maybe I've done that incorrectly. Maybe you know it's not coded properly. The screen reader doesn't seem to be supporting it. When in fact, screen readers, it's an option within screen readers that is turned off. I think in JAWS by default, and you'd have to go into your configuration to to enable that. Um, so. You know, it's so it's hard to tell. Sometimes it can be really misleading unless you are super proficient with screen readers. And so that's where, you know, validating your code, using accessibility checkers, all those things kind of come into play as an overall uh, accessibility strategy. If I may share my screen reader settings here. Run JAWS app, print app settings server. Preview JAWS settings web slash HTML. I'm going to expand some of them. And search here, DJ. Show enable virtual cursor for window. No audio volume for programs. Like you know what? I do the other Miss way around. Miscellaneous. Oh, miscellaneous. Open. One. Zero. Miscellaneous. Open. Visual bracket. Close. Visual one. Highlight zero. Mouse echo. Mouse echo. Open. One. Zero. Gesture. Gesture. One. Zero. Gesture. One. Zero. 
Convenient OZR. Convenient one zero one. Right. Zero. Convenient text handle. Text handle. Like Just to tell you to me how many function. I'm really not. I think if I said the three hundred function, I'm not exaggerating. Zero. Text one. Text zero one. Zero. Research it. Low research it. Plus keyboard. Close. Key one zero keyboard window glasses with one zero voice assistant low voice aliases close punctuation close punctuation one, punctuation zero, you know one, customize or zero, one customize synthesizer synthesizer and cursor braille of text viewer braille for, even one, for their braille then there's hundreds of function here braille graphics and symbols so say all, close graphics crap one zero how to read for example graphics say all close Speech and sound schemes close. how to read the different labels speech options speech velocity close Speech for one, verbosity level of that. Configure verbosity, configure verbosity. Yes. Zero text processing. Form mode. Look, text, text process mode. Web slash HTML slash web one. <laughs> read it. Code zero. Web slash HTML so, one. Read it. Code. I, I think I haven't, I couldn't expand all of them. But you can see the massive of configuration that we have here for just for this screen reader. It is, it's huge. And then, and people use it in a different way. And the, and then the abbreviation was a really good example. I mean, yes, uh, I, I, since I want to check uh, to make sure that my view is very consistent with visual view, I turn off that abbreviation, abbreviation feature. But uh, that could, for example, confuse a, 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 the typical developer because, okay, hey, what I'm doing wrong here? But, but this is a, indeed this is a screen reader feature that you can turn it off or on. Zero. So this also speaks to why you don't want to memorize 100 keystrokes to use a new application. You've got a lot of cognitive load already, just you know, getting familiar with this. This is an essential tool. I mean, this is, this is your livelihood. So you've got, to, you know, you've got to learn all these configuration settings and shortcuts and at least you know, a, a lot of them, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Then if you're using a browser app, you also have to learn all the configurations and shortcuts and so forth to navigate in the browser. And then if, if you're being asked to use a web-based application with a bunch of new keystrokes to memorize, the cognitive load is just extraordinary. So I hope this, this tour kind of um, you know, helps us to appreciate that. Yeah. Also for, for the 12 remaining people as a bonus, I'm gonna paste in um, Web Ames article on testing with the screen reader. Okay. <clears throat> I, I'm, going a, to, I'm going to do uh, Oh, please, I, I tell you one to. I can go in, turn uh, off my screen reader, screen sharing so you can show them if you want. Okay. Yeah, just, well, I just pasted that in. I think we can probably wrap up, but <clears throat> but I just wanted to share that, that they, they have a really good resource that includes kind of an overview, but also if you go to that page, then there are links in the menu to uh, tutorials for testing with NVDA, JAWS, and VoiceOver. Each has its own tutorial. And that provides just kind of a few of the highlights of using those each of those tools, including keyboard shortcuts. So that in combination with the slides that how do you put together that have sort of you know most common keystrokes. And we'll share those slides on the, uh, you'll be able to access it through the events page on our website, um, along with this recording soon, probably next week we'll have um, the recording captioned and, and everything will be up and available on our webinar archives page. So yeah, so there is a question, um, is, is it possible to get a recording or slides from this presentation? Indeed, that if you go to the uh, events page, um, and Dan, do you still have that link in your uh, clipboard? You can just paste that in. Um, there's a link from the events page to the archives of the webinars. And on that page, there's a link to each of the, the webinars in the series, including PowerPoints, as well as uh, a video recording. Great. Well, thanks, Adi. Ben, thanks for doing, doing overtime with this presentation. It seems your, your, head, your, your headset, you're no longer using that. Did you finally run out of battery? <laughs> You, you handled that very gracefully. No freaking out. <laughs> awesome. Well, and thanks to the people that stuck around to the end um, and hope you'll join us again for, for the next one in the series.
So Thank you, take everyone. care, everybody. Stop recording.